it's another day here in Planet Cuckoo and we've been delighted to see a be spoon fed the video of Vladimir Zelensky giving us a tour of his underground bunker where he's supposed to live. Now he used to be an actor and this has been taken almost straight out of Darkest Hour. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually use some of the footage from Darkest Hour for this. But if you are an actor and you want a stage, this bunker is a perfect staging. You need a wardrobe if you're an actor, costumes. And, and then we got a tour of his costumes, his war costumes that he uses, his green t-shirts and other things that says, stand with Ukraine or Ukraine is hope. And then we had a pan shot past his desk where there's a bust of um, Churchill. Like comparing Churchill to Zelensky or Zelensky to Churchill, is, is a bit like comparing Alison Hammond to John Stewart. It, it, the comparison is not going to be accurate, is it? No matter how much you wish it to be true. And then we had a tour of his bedroom where allegedly he's supposed to sleep and says he's been sleeping for a year and that's why he's got a bad back. No mention of the individual private jets that he's been taking to France, to Germany, to the EU, to the EU Parliament, to London twice, to France again, uh, to America more times than we can mention, and every other visit that he's done. But sure, he's been sleeping in an underground bunker because he is Churchill and this is his darkest hour. I mean, the obnoxious thing about it is how obvious it is, and at the same time how it's delivered by the media as if it's serious and not just propaganda and people swallow it down wholesale like it like it's absolutely palatable then we've had the guy from the world economic forum he's talking about individual carbon uh, credits or individual carbon tally or whatever name or nomenclature they put on this thing whereby each individual would know exactly how much carbon they're using we're developing through technology, an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. And he says, you know, don't, don't, don't be uh, too excited, but this is just around the corner with the age of technology, this is coming. So the individual carbon tracker will mean that once we have digital ID, you will have your individual carbon tracker lodged against your name and your individual uh, digital ID. I guess a name won't really matter anymore. And then think what that means in terms of your ability to buy, say, fuel or to go on trips or perhaps even to leave your home address or to go X kilometres from your home address. Maybe you'll need this many uh, individual carbon credits in order to go this many miles from your home address. You can just feel how the ability to individualise carbon in a time of climate emergency means you are self-limited by what you consume. And the idea from the World Economic Forum, of course, is that all of these useless consumers will be dramatically reduced in every way. And yet this is spoken about at the World Economic Forum like it's a great thing. And you can almost hear the room go, ooh, individual carbon tracker. How exciting for the little people. And then finally, in the UK, energy bills are about to spring up again by another £500. I mean, the figure it doesn't necessarily matter in the sense that it will just become unaffordable. Energy becomes unaffordable for millions more people. And again, the money doesn't really matter. I don't say that because I've got lots of it. I say it because it's about the conditioning. It's about the lessons that are being taught. The lessons are you cannot afford energy if you're an ordinary person in the UK. You have to try and reduce your energy consumption in every way you can. It doesn't matter if you're cold. It doesn't matter if it's dark. It doesn't matter if it's going to kill you. Your job is to reduce the amount of energy you use or you will be penalised. The other lesson is you need the government to help you. You need them to help you get your energy. You need the government to help you pay for your bills. You need the government to make it so that you can live, so that you start to depend on the government for energy, because ultimately it is the government that will control how much energy you're allowed according to your individual carbon tracker. So this is all a process of schooling. Some people think it's actually linked to some sort of energy shortage. 
Hence the Zelensky selling of the theatre, of the bunker, of the, oh, let's blame Ukraine, let's blame Russia, let's blame the big bad Putin. But really, away from that and away from the individual carbon tracker, you get to see these other schooling mechanisms, teaching people that energy is not something they can afford. They need the state to allocate it with them and they have to earn it in some way. So you see how these three stories are linked. You see the playbook opening up before you. And I suppose for so many of us, the frustration remains that so many after all we've gone through in the last three years, still refuse to see it. However, you are not alone. We are many and we are stronger together.